Before we can get to painting things inside of our tile maps though, we need something called a tile set. And to get those, we're going to once again repurpose our textures. So from the assets and the textures folder, the final thing we haven't used, you may have noticed, is the T underscore terrain. What we want to do with this is something a little bit more unique. So we're gonna right click again. Previously, we've been extracting things as uh, individual sprites. What we want to do with this one is we will change this to create a tile set. Now what this means, you can see it looks pretty much exactly the same at the moment. This allows us to specifically set things like the size of each individual cell and then give these different cells things like uh, collisions from this option up here. So at the moment, the default tile size is 32 by 32. And for those of you paying attention based on the, the size of the, uh, the texture, if you've looked at this, this isn't going to work. So each of these four basically are meant to be what we select. So we can see that 32 by 32 is a little bit too small. When we're painting things, it's been expected that we're going to be painting things in blocks this size. So what we want to do to achieve that is just up this to 64 by 64. And this is very important that we make this change now, as this will kind of carry across to our tile map when we create that a little bit later. So it's going to save us time and automate the process a little bit. So with that, that means that we now have the correct selection size for all of our different pieces, like so. So that's the first important step. Now, the next thing to note is that I'm only going to be working with this selection up here. If you wanted to make different levels and use these different assets that I've provided, then you can use all of these. Just follow the same process that I'll be making on this selection up here for the different parts down below. And then you can come up with your own creations for the levels with these parts. Now, the next thing is we want to consider then how these will be used in the world. So things like this, I'm going to class this as a, a bit of background information. So things like the background won't need any collision. It's not going to interact with the player or anything else. In a similar way, we have bits in the middle just here. So these again, they're likely never going to come in contact with the player. So we probably won't need to add collision to anything like this. The bits around the outside though, so these walls and the floors and things, these will have potential to be interacted with. So we want to add collision to these tiles. Now the way that we do this is a little bit of a repetitive process, but we're gonna select each individual tile and we'll see that this appears up here. Now, unfortunately, if we select multiple things, that disappears and there's no kind of copy paste that I've seen. So what we want to do is select each bit that we want to have a collision go to add box and you can see over here a white box has just appeared around our collision tile which shows us where the collision is being set if we wanted to update that a little bit so maybe that's a little bit too going up a little bit too far a little bit too high we can move the arrow around and that will change the size of our colliding box or we can extend that if we wanted to go past the visible image now for all of these these actually work quite well if we just leave it very snug around the uh, the, the grid size we have here so i'm just going to go through and basically select every bit and hit the add box so that's the first one done uh, basically all of the outsides there I want all of the sides, so these tops and sides, and then all of these individually can have their collision as well. So I'll put that in a kind of sped up montage in the background here so you don't have to watch it in real time and you can follow along and pause it if it gets ahead. Okay, so with that, everything done, I've given these colliders as well because these can add some nice detail around the, the edge of the levels that you can still jump up on just to break up the monotony of just seeing this one bit of land and the border. So the final thing is once you have all of your collision, you think you have it set up in the correct way, uh, we can go to the colliding tiles option here and it will actually change everything to be a blue grid based on what has collision and then what doesn't have collision. So we can see that everything that I said would need collision has it here. I don't think the player's ever going to reach this, so probably not worth doing. They definitely won't be able to reach this unless they've gone a little bit buggy. And likewise, this is just kind of filler, visual filler to go in between the different grids when we're painting to make things a little bit more interesting. These will all need collision. They're only really going to be used as like platforms or bricks to jump upon. So that is pretty much perfect. Now, I probably won't use these, but just to show you a final example, we do have these down here. So if you wanted to use uh, floating platforms or something, these probably won't be ideal to use in a tile map anyway, because if you wanted a platform, you normally want to be able to jump up through them. And you cannot do that very easily with a tile map. You probably want to make that blueprint of its own and you'll set up collision in a different way. But if for some reason you did want to use this, if you just want them to be like a solid bridge that you can't jump through, then again, very similar way. We're just going to add collision here to all of these. And then this is where this comes in handy. So obviously the bridge here, we'll call this a bridge, 
is definitely too big from the bottom here. So we're gonna select this and we can just drag this up and maybe drag it up just a little bit more. So there's no great way to overlap this. We can change the grid snapping down to something like one. So we get less of a snap. And there we go, we can go around the outline perfectly. And we'll do that for all of these. So I thought this used to update. Uh, it seems to only have information about the whole grid size. I was hoping it would visually represent this here, but I can confirm from previous experiments that in game, it will take the collision from this box size here and not necessarily what you see here. So that now means that if you do add these in, the character won't be colliding until they reach the absolute bottom of this rather than the uh, the dead pixel space around it. So that is really all you need to do to get a tile set set up. That's ready to go. The collisions are as we need those. And like I said, if you wanted to take that same approach, you can do that for all of the different assets. You can probably already see why I'm not going to do that for all of the, uh, the assets here for the sake of the tutorials, as that would be a little bit repetitive. And this will be more than enough to show the main techniques and principles that go into creating our tile map. So we can now close the tile set. We've pretty much finished with this for the rest of the course. Uh, I will drop this into the tile assets. So we're only going to have one tile set and one tile map. So it's probably not worth having separate folders for them. So I've just created one kind of encompassing tile asset folder. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.